Hello everyone, Crystal Fisher here and welcome to a quick Spyro texture hack video. Now this time I'm not going to be showing off a new texture hack, but rather showing you guys in the community how to make one. So look, there's a lot of moving parts with texture hacks, there's a lot of things to consider. Firstly, I want to thank Jeremy Thompson and HWD. They have told me about how important this is for the community, you know, so they so you guys know how to do it, because I know that a lot of people in the like particularly the Spyro speedrunning community, you know, have heard about texture hacks and everything like that, but they don't know what you have to do. And the main key ingredient to this is Spyro Edit. So longtime Spyro fans may know about Spyro Edit, it's a fantastic uh, it's a fantastic program and what I want you guys to do is go to LX Shadows GitHub or lxshades.github.io and read through everything there first. Um, and I know that sort of sounds like a cop out of a, of a thing to do, but that's what you're going to have to do because particularly the textures section, it kind of go in, goes into a bit of the nuance of, of, of you know some of the restrictions because as you guys may know as well, there are a lot of restrictions with you know making texture hacks. Sadly, um, it's one of the reasons why I actually stopped you know a few years ago. You know, back in back in the, the 2010s, I was doing them all the time. But there are a lot of restrictions. So once you've installed Spyro Edit and you've put everything where you need to go, you can go to your config in EPSXE and you can go to your config video. And as you can see here, I've got my my renderer that I'm using, my graphics plugin, but I also have Spyro Edit 2.2 there. When I'm ready to go, I simply open up the ISO. Let's say we're gonna do Spyro 3, obviously, and this is going to be for Spyro 3.5. We come over to the textures section, we click save scene textures. And now what that does is that allows us to have a save of these textures. So take a look here, we have midday garden home, textures.bitmap. Now this is gonna be the bitmap that we use to edit, to change the, how the level looks. This is this is hugely important. And you're gonna need a you know, photo editor, an image editor program in order to change these. So there's a lot to think about when you're making a texture hack. And genuinely, it's probably gonna to take too long to explain it here. But if you look at this, we'll now see all the different textures in Midday Gardens Home. So for example, I'll show you what I did with one of the texture hacks that's Frosty Gardens. I'll show you this one here. This one here is Frosty Gardens. And so I made this in Photoshop. This is basically laid over the top of this texture file. Uh, I saved it in a different format, but you see here, you know, we have these different areas, these different elements. Let's have a look what happens here. See, I have now layered these textures from, I believe it was Ice Cavern, on top of these. So what you inherently want to do is make sure that your textures align with what's already there. And that's where a lot of the restrictions are in play and reusing textures and stuff like that. But I'll show you what, for example, it will look like if we were to simply just save this. So what we have to do is we have to save the file and we have to go, this is in Photoshop, save a copy. And if we, we need to make sure it's called textures.bitmap. Let's replace it, yes. And then, this is something that is actually important over here. I'm gonna drag it over here. We need to make sure it's 16 bit at an absolute maximum. That's just for file set, it's, it's complicated, but we, you just have to make sure it's 16 bit or lower. So if you go okay. So now we're gonna click load scene textures here and have a look in the distance as we get closer as well that these textures have now been replaced. Now this is not flawless and as you can see already there are some issues. We need to make sure that when we're replacing textures we pretty much replace everything because what will happen is there's going to be these weird overlaps and different textures being used in different spots but this is a great example of showing an, you know, an into, you know, just sort of the, the first bit of texture hacking. And as you will see, yes, unfortunately, there is some texture degradation. Um, yes, I just did a double jump in this game because I, I've got it hacked in. But um, yeah, it's, it's there's gonna be degradation and it, that's unfortunately just a side effect. As I said, there are lots and lots of side effects about this. And you know, I will take questions in the comments and stuff like that, but some stuff I would, you know, again, suggest reading Alex Shadow's you know, information. Basically, one thing that you wanna make sure you're doing is you're not using too many colors. And see, with something like Photoshop, uh, it's, not, it's not the greatest for, you know, culling color. But something like a paint.net uh, can kind of downscale and use less colors and you can move it to 8-bit and stuff like that. But anyway, we're getting into the weeds. Let's let's keep showing off some stuff. 
let's add a little bit more snow into this level. So I'm just, I've just got these pre-saved here, just adding these in, and now let's take a look. See, look, I missed some of the uh, some of the snow. So as you can see, what's happening is, again, I'm glad I'm showing this off. Trust me, trust me. I'm glad I'm showing off the glitches because what you really need to do is make sure you get it right pretty early on. You want to try and replace as much as you can. You can use this as kind of a progress report, but you'll see that, you know, when it's not quite working like this, you know, things will glitch, things will pop in and, and stuff like that. So I've now clicked load scene textures again. And as you can see, this is the completed version of my texture hack from you know all those years ago, which is Inspired 3.5. But you'll notice something here. You'll think, okay, what's with the colors? The colors are a little bit off. You know, they're, they're not they're not matching one what they look like in the texture hack, and two, you know, as you can see, you know, you see things like this green around them. You think, all right, okay, what's going on there? Now, this is where things get a little bit complicated. You see, we have this colors tab here. Right, and this colors tab uh, allows us to change the color of the fog, the color of the light, and also the skybox. So I'm gonna actually load the skybox uh, after. I'll show you how to do, replace those. Um, but what you wanna do here is, for example, this is RGB. So if we simply take away, so RG, we take away this, let's maybe put it to 99, and we put this to, uh, you know, a little bit lower. It's basically, you know, the lower it is, you know, the more color is taken away and, you know, addition and subtraction. So let's go maybe 66, maybe go to 77 and we make it a little bit brighter with the light. And then the fog, you kind of go with a similar color with that. So you, you know, you maybe go like that and maybe keep it like that. And then once we click assign level colors, See, we've now changed the overall color of the level, the overall vertex lighting. And see, it just looks so good. It, it's like, it's amazing what sort of subtle changes you can do. But for example, like if I want, I can go crazy with this. I could go average fog, you know, 55. I could go 55 and then, you know, 80. I could make this, I could make this uh, 88. I can make that, you know, completely take away the green or almost completely take away the green and now you know it's kind of a completely different atmosphere and you'll notice that uh, hwd did this for some of his texture hacks that he did or some of his level hacks where he's just changed them like that so yeah it's it's all about just kind of experimenting you can click make here and it will like pick you know you can you can like do like templates let's say we want to go like i don't know uh, orange there see that now it takes away the blue entirely assign it yeah okay whoa that's bizarre because this is like an ice level okay wow all right so yeah so you probably don't want to you don't want to mess with this too much if i go again yeah it, it kind of gets worse and worse so you don't you you almost don't want to you don't want to keep uh changing it you want to maybe reload into the level once it goes a little bit too crazy because yeah it's probably just better to, to exit out or, or lay down a save state you know so it's, it's, even if i go assign level colors from here you'll see see that because once you've done it, it's it's sort of irreparable. So, I mean, this kind of looks like a creepy pasta kind of level, but yeah. Hopefully I'm not rambling too much. I'm trying to go over everything while also not being like so in depth that it's, it's you know, insane. The next thing to think about here is the sky tweak. So we can load different skies from other levels. Now, one of the things with this is that you cannot load a level with a skybox that is bigger in, a, in file size than the one that you're already in that's already in the level so we can change the colors for example similar principle we can change the existing ones we have uh, let's go let's go like this assign sky colors All right see we've just changed the sky have a look at this oh actually that's kind of cool actually that's really cool actually um, so we can change the color of the skybox that's great but we can't go crazy with skybox replacements. One thing that will happen, and you cannot do this for Spyro uh, 3.5 edits, you cannot use the disable sky occlusion to fix a skybox. Sometimes it just doesn't work, but in a regular skybox, uh, you know, a regular texture hack, you know, it's perfectly reasonable to click that, and that will fix a lot of the glitches uh, that can sometimes happen with these skyboxes. The other thing is that when you are done, 
with these changes, you wanna click save. So for example, if you click save sky, it will save that version of the sky we have. If you click save colors, it will save the version of the colors that you have. And then it'll appear in your Spire Edit folder. See, so once again, we go back here. You have it your Spire Edit folder. See, so once again, we go back here. You have it in here. See, in Spire Edit, Midday Garden Home. And then you've got sky, colors, and textures. Now, these are my other textures here, but this is the one. So this is really all you need to replace uh, to replace you know, your, your textures. Once you load up the level, and then you would you click Load All, for example, it would load everything in this folder. Now, one thing you're probably wondering are uh, where are these textures? Where can I get the Spyro textures, for example? And they're very easy to get if you have Spyro Edit and you extract some of the game files and, and do that, but that's a whole process. There, it is, there is a tutorial online uh, on YouTube. There's plenty actually, but uh, what we might do is we might provide some links to get some of these textures from Spyro 1, 2, and 3, and then you know you can kind of use them as, you know, in, you know, for ex you know, you can use them as inspiration because I think it is very hard to do a deck check without having some existing Spyro content and really some Spyro knowledge as well. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching it. Hopefully you have a little bit more of an idea on what to do for texture hacks. And I cannot wait to see some of yours. Please feel free to send me links to the stuff that you do. Tag me in the Spyro speedrunning server. Very, very keen to see what you will come up with. Thanks very much for watching. See you later.